by Esther of IPA Group, bringing premier online promotion to your business. And Melanie of Stump Social Media Training, who empowers business owners to manage social media and marketing for themselves. Welcome back to another episode of the Monday Morning Marketing Podcast. Today we're joined by Naomi Johnson, an expert LinkedIn profile writer um, who has been writing profiles on LinkedIn for a good number of years. And we're going to be talking about leveraging LinkedIn for business success. Welcome, Naomi. Well, hi, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. So why LinkedIn, first of all? Why LinkedIn? There's loads of profile or loads of platforms out there. Why LinkedIn? Yeah, each um, platform has its own flavor, its own reason for being. Um, And LinkedIn is the one for business where the expectation is we are going to talk about business. If you are on Facebook, you will run into people who are there solely for a personal reason and they will not appreciate you reaching out. Um, If you're trying to get into a corporate, for example, and you find the secretary of the CEO on LinkedIn, she is not going to be best pleased with you marketing to her or promoting anything to her because that's her personal space. I often think of it like Centre Parks, which is a UK holiday park, Um, you know, the swimming pool and the trees and the cabins and all of those different things. And people, you know, our ideal clients pretty much go there and they go there with their families and their dogs. And if you walked up to them, on, an, on a Saturday afternoon and said, oh, by the way, I sent you an email. Did you get it? Or, oh, I run this business. You run that business. Can we have a meeting? They're going to be pretty annoyed at you because that's a personal holiday. You know, it's time for them. It's not, they're not in business mode. And you'd have to be very, very careful with managing that relationship. Whereas with LinkedIn, you are effectively at a business networking event. Someone is on there for business reasons um, and it's a clear, easy approach and you're not going to have any of those social issues of stepping over the line. So when people have um, a personal profile on LinkedIn, do you think they're more open to engaging in a conversation or does it take a certain type of posting or certain amount of information that goes in their, their summary, perhaps, that means that they're prepared to be open to conversation like that? It depends what you're there for and what they're there for. So if they are clearly looking for a job, then you're probably not reaching out to them anyway because they aren't your ideal customer. So there is a lot that goes on at the moment where people are sending emails, like cold emails to people saying, hey, I can help you with your website and da 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 And there's no relationship there. And I think we all get those messages and think, oh, for goodness sake, I just connected with you, thinking you're going to add value to my network. And so you're going to be an interesting person, commenting, sharing content, um, but actually you're just selling yep. to me. And that is that is the biggest no-no on LinkedIn. And it shows a real lack of sophistication. And interestingly enough, the unopened messages that I have in uh, my other inbox, you know, LinkedIn has two inboxes where people have paid for the email to me who are literally cold marketing to me. What well, surprises me every time is like I think seven highest ones that are just the recent ones that are showing are all people saying, I can do your social selling for you. And it's like, well, clearly you can't because you're giving me a cold message. Um, and so it's very much, it is about building relationships. It's very much about building a network in your community. And yes, it comes down to the post that you're sharing. And more importantly, if you want to convert them into sales, it comes down to your LinkedIn profile. Yeah, because just when you were talking about the the messages that we get, <laughs> I love, absolutely love getting messages from people. I'm being sarcastic here. Yeah. <laughs> can't pick up on the tone. Love getting messages from people offering the same services that I do. Oh, yeah, like, that's just so read funny. my bio, read my profile. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you wouldn't have wasted a message to me because, you know, there is absolutely no point in reaching out to me to do all these things that I already do. Yeah. And often it's automated software that's doing it as well, which will get you into trouble with LinkedIn anyway, because it goes against their policies, because it goes against the ethos of the platform in itself, um, which says everything, doesn't it really? Yeah. And have you seen the platform changing recently? Because I've noticed personally um, that a lot more people are sharing more personal information, you know, about their trips and they're using emojis and they're using loads of hashtags like they do on Mm. other social media platforms. Are people not using LinkedIn correctly or has LinkedIn changed? 
Yeah, LinkedIn's always evolving. And I think that the emoji thing, you, you, you bang on with that. That is something that's, that's coming in a lot. And you'll see in my header, and I've decided to use them instead of like the uh, slash. And I think it is because color is so important um, and it does lift a profile. It lifts out of the, like the mundane of words and having to read the words and it creates an impression. And I think these are really good. Um, somebody said yesterday on a talk I was giving, they said, oh, it's becoming like Facebook. You're expected now to share personal things. And I actually pushed back on that. And I said, actually, I really disagree with a lot of things that people are sharing. Um, they want engagement on their posts and they want to feel popular and they want to create, um, have followers. Now, my big thing is, is as an expert entrepreneur, as a thought leader, you need to be doing pay. You really, you want is paid business and you want to be spending 70% of your time doing the job. Um, and if you're spending all your time doing marketing, I would suggest that you're not keeping your expertise going anymore and um, because your expertise are starting off little fledgling in marketing. You're not at the coalface doing the job anymore. So it's really, you know, getting like 10,000 followers is vanity statistics, in my opinion. Um, if you cannot convert that into paid business and you're not spending 70% of your time doing the client work, then you are literally wasting you're wasting time and you're you're caught up in something that isn't worthwhile doing. So when it comes to people sharing more personal content, um, I would question how is that personal content actually leading to them actually getting paid business? Um, or is it actually just making them feel like, oh, well, I got 10,000 comments and views on this post. I'm doing really well. Um, and actually selling really quite vulnerable stuff in order for your business to work. And I just think you're just selling off the most private parts of yourself for not actually any great return. And I'm not a big fan of doing that. I think it's about um, sharing valuable content that helps to solve a problem and signpost people and bringing people to an awareness that they have a problem in the first place, that the status quo that they're living in, the payment they're living in, isn't normal, that there are solutions. And I'll tell you, um, I saw this last year, someone saw, shared a post about their wife having like, I think four miscarriages and how he felt about it and all that kind of thing. And it had nothing to do with his business message. He was just sharing it. And I thought, it's not your story. It's not your pain. It's your wife's pain. And you're selling it out in order to get yourself clicks and everything. And your profile's not even customized properly that someone would follow you and want to buy from you if they just felt the sympathy of coming through to look and see what you're about and if it's not connected with what you're writing about on your profile like if you're a cancer survivor and you put that in your headline and you post about it and it's part of your mission and your why and how you relate and connect with people brilliant go for it that's really really great but what this guy did is he put it up but he was trying to get a popular post and he hadn't any consideration for how triggering that would be for a woman who has come back to work in the last three, four weeks or longer of, I've just had a miscarriage and I'm now putting myself back to work and I've logged onto LinkedIn. I'm going to be really positive today and get myself going again. And just how triggering that would be. And it had no purpose. And if it's not got a purpose of actually helping that person, yes, get triggered, but move forward, why is it there? And I decided um, with this theory and this annoyance at this type of post that I was going to post up um, about my graduation last year from an, M from an MBA. And instead of just saying, hey, I've got an MBA, here's my, um, my photo of me getting graduating just so that people would, who know me would care, I decided I was going to test this out. And I, I put on there, age six, I got told this and age 13, this happened. Like all these adversities that have come to me with the message being, don't let anybody tell you that you've, um, that you should be, you know, don't let anyone put you down. And I, I did it very specifically for a very specific reason, but actually it does relate to the general business message I have in some respects. Um, and yeah, I got um, hundreds of comments. I got 10,000 plus views I proved the point but also it didn't lead to any new profile visits and it didn't lead to any um, new leads or connections so okay that's my story it wasn't highly highly like emotional painful kind of thing that goes massive um, it went massive enough for me but it proved the point that if it's not leading to business and it's not part of your mission 
why share such personal content? Let's not be like Facebook. Let's keep the message aligned. Yeah, the Facebookification um, of LinkedIn is a real thing. And I'm glad that Esther's brought it up and you've been able to answer responsibly about it. Mm -hmm. Um, So LinkedIn has obviously for many years been used as a portal for jobs, but it's now a marketing tool for people who are happy in theirs. Mm. (laughs) But I I also um, see it, uh, hopefully correctly, as a search engine optimization tool as well. Um, So one of the top reasons um, that people approach uh, a you know, a specialist such as yourself, is because they want to get found for what they do best. Mm. So where would you tell them to particularly work on in the profile? And, um, you know, how quickly can they see some sort of traction after they've made these changes? Yeah, absolutely. So it's all about relationship at the end of the day. Um, You can meet someone at a business networking event And they will go through the normal process of I'm going to connect with the people that I met at the networking, which is absolutely fantastic thing to do. And if we had more time, I'd share stories on that, of just how good it is to do. Um, So you can you can bet that someone you met in networking is going to connect with you. If you're at that networking event and you do a 60 second pitch, there's only so much you can communicate and most people will probably forget it. So when they come to your profile, they are looking. um, They might just be going through the click, click, clicks of it. But that's somebody you want to interrupt in their day to have them go, oh, this is actually more than I thought, or this is this is really good. The idea being that that person can really understand what you do and can refer you. Uh, and if someone can't refer you if they don't understand the problem that you solve. So, you know, you can meet someone face to face and they can buy from you and the LinkedIn profile will never come into, into the, the equation. But, and this is something I talk a lot to the private investors that I speak to, there are always decision, hidden decision makers. And there are people who say, oh, why are you buying that from Esther? She, she, I, my mate can do that for you for cheaper. But actually, the problem that they're thinking is getting solved is not the problem that's getting solved. And actually, Esther is the best person to do it, not their mate who they think is. is. And so when that person, that hidden decision maker who has the ear of your prospects, the ear of your client, who will cause these questions to happen, when we actually need to speak to them as well in the profile, that when they come to it, they go, oh, yeah, OK, I get the problem. I get why this is the person's the expert. I got it. So it all forms part of the marketing mix. When someone Googles you, your LinkedIn profile will come up as part of that mix and they will expect to look at it and see something that makes sense as a basic, you know. Um, and then also on the other side is, Sometimes you you can literally just have a LinkedIn profile working for you and you don't need the website and other things, um, depending on where who you are and what kind of career you're doing. But the LinkedIn That's profile... That's controversial there. Mm, I know. <laughs> it, depends. it depends on the type of business. It really does and who you are. And if you're still figuring out your message and who you are and what you're selling, and actually a website company is going to be really kind of like oh my gosh you're so unclear I don't know where to start so they'll actually like want you to test your message and be confident on LinkedIn first and then come with something very precise um so the LinkedIn profile is is so key because for every piece of content you send share and every comment you make on someone else's content and every message you send is going to drive someone to that LinkedIn profile and they are you are going to want to make an impression quickly Your LinkedIn profile for anyone visiting is a distraction to their day. And they will be asking, is this a good use of my time or is it a rabbit hole I don't want to go down? So as soon as someone comes to the profile, you want to set context. What is the conversation I am here to have with this person? And it needs to grab their attention like, oh, this is who you are and what you do. Background image is really vital for that. And then anchoring that again with what you're saying in the headline. This is the problem that I solve. So I don't necessarily want to know that you're a business consultant or a business coach. Sometimes putting the title is relevant just to anchor things down. But actually, I want to hear the movement. What is the development and the sign? What is it you're going to help me with? And then obviously anything you put in the headline has to be anchored again into the about section. And the about section needs to feel like a conversation, like I'm meeting you. The last thing I want is a sales message. And the last thing you Mm. want to do is assume that every person coming to your profile needs the help that you are offering because they're not only about 10 percent maybe of the people that you meet in your and having your networking is actually an ideal client but everybody's someone 
that can recommend. So when you actually raise awareness of the problem that you solve and you stand for something very, very clear, um, that will have people go, oh my goodness, right, I need that. Oh my goodness. And they identify with it or they go, oh my God, my friend needs that. I should send them this, you know, send them this profile that really explains it. Or you'll leave them with something that the next time they're at a business networking event, someone mentions that problem and goes, well, have you tried this? This is actually the right way to go about it. And actually, they're just quoting your LinkedIn profile. Um, and then they either remember your name and recommend you, or the awareness that you has just gone to that new person, their brain is now so primed, and of course, that we're all connected and linked anyway, um, it's very likely that they will come across your profile within two weeks and go, oh my God, that's that's what this person was saying. Um, and it will draw them in. So there's some really vital elements you want to get right on your profile, but it has to feel like a conversation. It has to feel like a relationship. And I have to feel like I'm getting to know you, not just being, I do this, I do this. Do you need help with this? I'm here. I can do this. This is my background. Because why am I reading it? Why do I care about you until you become relevant to me? So wonderfully put <laughs> it, it was actually so how about the the peculiar characters out there that are known for doing a number of things not that I'm thinking of anybody in particular me um and you know when you wear several um hats, hats yeah. at the end of the day so as a, as an example just a random random example um digital marketer speaker journalist podcaster um trainer with that too so what do you do then because you you want to try and get a diverse audience um because you've got all these little fingers in pies um so how would you go about doing it that way okay well i would also say with the podcast are you talking about digital marketing um, yes. Exactly. So it's one me- it's one route to market. You're still solving your problem. It's just a route to market. Um, and I can't remember everything you just said. My brain has just forgotten it. But um, this specifically, but I, conceptually, I get it. Um, everything you've just said is a route to market. They are all the same thing. And so it's about standing in that instance. And I'll talk about the other instance, which is different. Um, in that instance, it's about being really clear about the problem that you solve. And then these are my ways of doing it. So um, what you can do, and you'll see on my LinkedIn profile, I I made this update about six weeks ago, um, wanting to take advantage of the new um, function, is that I have the profile company, and then I have split myself up into job roles underneath it. Um, and that's one thing you can do. Only three will actually show. So you don't you, you, you can have more, but you want to keep your three as the main ones you want attention for. And also you can add a piece of rich content media under it as well. So you want to have your call to action, like I've got asked for a LinkedIn profile review. And uh, so that those things are standing out. So you can split yourself up into the job role and say podcast, but actually what is the problem the podcast is there to solve and what kind of guests do you want and who do you want to have approach you and how can I find out more about it and how can I listen to it? All of that can go into that entry and you've got 2,000 characters, um, including spaces, to actually to really just pitch the podcast and what you want from it. Um, and it is part of the company of the digital marketing because it's a route to market. So it's about seeing them as routes to market rather than separate things. When you are somebody who does have separate things, um, what you would do there is you would put in the different entries in the um, jobs, you know, the experience entries. And right. depending on what you're pushing at any one time, you can adjust. If the if the entry is date to present, is still open, it can be, the order can be moved. And so I have a client who every fortnight, every, every week he promotes something different and cool. it's different one of his businesses. And so we just move it the order so that if I see that piece of content in that week that's the thing that's going to be at the top um and so it's you know sometimes private investors are like doing something with one of their companies that they're really pushing and so their usual I'm a private investor do you want me to buy your business um will just drop down and that company will come up and their their position and it will be the main thing um so that's one that's one thing you want to do is consider having the different job positions for the different things you're in. But also, and I kind of illustrated it just now, is you want to chunk up. You are a unique individual. 
you are not a fragmented individual. You are unique and all of these things tie together, these threads all tie together. You are the, the threads of the same jumper. <laughs> I've never said that before, but it's effectively the same thing. You are not fragmented. You are not multiple people. Therefore, when I talk to you about the different things that you do, I will be able to chunk up and find the overarching theme that makes you you and makes you stand the problem that you stand for. Um, and it's that in the about section that we want to tie all together. Um, and we want to point at different things. So one lady yesterday came to me, she's a life coach and she's also an executive assistant. Um, and it was in a group session, so I didn't really get down to the, the nitty gritty of it. But if she is intending to stay as an executive assistant and actually she really enjoys that and she enjoys the life coaching, there's no reason to hide that whatsoever. Because a lot of people, they do want two jobs or, you know, you can say you like both. Um, and actually you can make it part of your story and your reason for being and your reason for working with a certain type of client. So when you pitch it just right, all of these things like I'm a life coach, but I also have a full time job or part time job comes becomes part of your branding message. And it actually gives you much more clout and stability and it really can resonate with your audience. So, yeah. And, and people often say, do I need two profiles? I've never come across it that somebody would unless they're in a job where the job has has sat them down and said, this is how you will present yourself on LinkedIn and this is how things should be. If that is the case, set them up a separate LinkedIn profile and let them be responsible for your connections um, in that regard. Like if you go to networking on their behalf or you attended a Zoom on their behalf, then that profile comes up. But generally, it's always one profile and there's something overarching allows all of these things to come together wow (laughs) (laughs) how how do you follow on from that i mean um there's just so much that you just don't really think about whenever you open up your linkedin and you know if you're opening it for the first time if you're listening and you don't even have a linkedin profile um these are all things that can help you get set up um, if you have one, you've had it for a long time, go back, review it. Um, like we said, things have changed. Mm. There are other things on it. You can add links in now, right? You can add a link into well, there's um, different your pages profile. you can go for now, company pages, services pages. Um, it's just getting bigger and bigger. It's becoming quite the monster is our LinkedIn. It's yeah. actually getting just don't they, use it like Facebook. Yeah, they've actually it was 2012, they took service pages away. Um oh no, it was different things that they've had like events they've had and they've taken it away and then covid happened they brought events back um so it's quite interesting but the profile and i totally agree with you esther about reviewing your linkedin profile because i had the same content on my profile for about seven years i think and the market itself evolved and just saying hey everybody wake up you need a linkedin profile was no longer enough because obviously my market got saturated with other people writing LinkedIn profiles as well. Yeah. But actually there's something very unique about the way I do it and how I do it. And that's what actually I upgraded. Um, and, you know, even um, two days ago, I was splitting up my books into the different uh, job entries so that I could feature the books better. And I haven't finished it yet. There's more I can be doing. I just was getting that bit going. Um, so there's, there is well worth reviewing and reviewing how the different functions come into play and how they can be used um, to better feed your sales funnel. Um, and it's all about knowing what your outcome is. And I cannot stress enough that your outcome is to book sales appointments because without sales appointments, you can't get sales. And if you're not booking sales appointments, then you are absolutely wasting your time on LinkedIn. If you cannot get people to book sales appointments or ask you to speak at events, um, and podcasts such as this one, then it's not working. And and this is prime because we've not actually, if I may say, we've not met before today. Yeah, yeah. You pre- approached me completely out of the blue and said, will you be on my podcast? And that is, forgive me for, you know, that is the definition of it working. Um, and also like I've just, I've had several people approach me and put themselves in my diary for an appointment. I open my diary, never heard or seen of them before. Um, I have a half an hour conversation with them and they part with four grand, four grand. Do you know what I mean? In half an hour. Yeah, but you um, have no idea how much we've been stalking you beforehand. Well, that's it. Exactly. You don't know. Yeah. You and never it, know who's watching. You never know who's watching and, and where they're coming from. So one thing I do have on my website, which is the profile.company. I'm just 
preempting your next question actually here but yeah, yeah go ahead um, the Pro- <laughs> company on there um there's a diagnostic and it it goes beyond oh why is your linkedin profile it, it looks at why is your linkedin profile activity not sorry your linkedin activity is not getting you the results that you want and it goes beyond have you thought in your headline have you got a headshot because actually when you go on a lot of this training with gurus who teach you about linkedin they'll teach you about messaging content building up your followers all of those things and they will brush through very very quickly the profile now i've already written a book on just the profile alone and i could redo it and make it 10 times bigger um just on the psychology of how people buy um and and why and how it all comes together which actually i have written two books if you think about it in that way because i've got three books all together um but there's a lot that goes into the linkedin profile just in itself. So the diagnostic on my website asks you questions that look at the business structure and the business foundations um, and then checks in a few things like, is it how is it actually working for you? And one of the questions is, is do, do people reach out to you and ask you to speak on their podcasts or at their events that you've never heard of? <laughs> and so that's actually one of the questions. Um, and so there's a diagnostic there that people can use to really look at, are the business foundations um, structured in the right way? And you're, people are very welcome to reach out to me and actually go through the answers of that com- that seat question there and see where it comes out. Um, it gives you the answers as well on it. And then also there's a template on the website as well that people are very welcome to download that template to write their own LinkedIn profile. And all the content actually from my book, What to Put on Your LinkedIn Profile, I haven't updated that book since 2018, to be honest, um, because I put it on the website. Um, so the, the template is linked to the pages on the website, which are all the guides of how to write each section. So people are very welcome to come and get the template and use my guides and write it for themselves. Um, and then also they can book a conversation with me um, where I will review your LinkedIn profile for you. So those three options are on the pink bar. Or, or she can speak at your event as well. Yes. And yeah. there's also, <laughs> you can also find that bit as well. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's various options there, but um I'm very, very passionate about the LinkedIn profile. I have been for 10 years now. Um, I've been reviewing them for 10 years. And then after two years, I was like, oh, this is ridiculous. People can't write their own profiles. Let me do it for them. Um, And that's when the profile company began. You are an absolute niching goddess. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, you can't get much more niche than how many characters? (laughs) (laughs) yeah my brain's very strategic as well so i um i niche a lot of people i'm like okay this is the problem you solve this is this is where you need to be this is how you need to do it um and that's really my superpower to be honest yeah and then getting into words (laughs) brilliant well again the page is the profile.company if you would like to find all that stuff that naomi just talked about thank you so so much naomi for being on with us today and uh, we promise we weren't stalking for that long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yourself. Probably since I my profile in December, actually. I could probably try, I could try, which is it giving, well, this is evergreen. So let's say about 10 weeks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure and, and to answer your questions and everything. So thank you. No problem. We'll be back next week, guys, with another episode of the Monday Morning Marketing Podcast. Until then, bye bye. So who knew that LinkedIn would have so much to offer from just one profile page, Esther? Just, uh, just the, like section, the about me. <laughs> like, nobody wants to know about me. That's what I was thinking. They don't. They don't. You are uh, irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> Is it getting it from the queen here? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the people that write, oh, I'm this and I'm that. Like you can spot a CV one easily but sometimes um i come across people who are consultants and they actually do need to bring in new business for the business they're in and they're very highly technical very highly niched and i look at it and i'm like oh you're just a consultant in a massive organization you're selling yourself for your next role um but actually they're not um, um or you can say the opposite